Hi there. Welcome to my video on elementary differential equations. This is the first video for chapter 8 and the topic for this chapter is Fourier series. Now Fourier series is a series to represent periodic functions. On the surface it looks like a departure from our main topic that is differential equation but uh, later on we will go back to differential equations in particular linear differential equations and see that this series um, can actually be a very powerful tool in solving those equations okay so with that said um, let's um, start with an introduction let's talk about periodic functions and a particular set of periodic function that is um, the trig set okay so let's be given a function we call it f of x and it's periodic with period capital P what does it mean that means if you evaluate the function f at x plus P for any value x then you recover the function let's make a obvious um, observation so if p is a period then any multiples of p like 2p 3p 4p they will all be period for the same function so among all the possible periods of a function there will be a smallest one and that smallest one is called the fundamental period okay let's make um, a few more observations the first one will be um, if you have two functions f and g they are both periodic and they have the same period p then any linear combination of these two that is a constant a times f plus a constant b times g that will also be a periodic function um, with the same period p and here a and b are just any arbitrary constants second um, the product of these two functions will also be periodic with exactly the same period and the proof can simply be done by this definition f of x plus p times g of x plus p will be f of x times g of x and therefore p will be the period okay so we have encountered um, a typical periodic function in through our study of mathematics um, namely the trig functions and in particular the functions of sine and cosine okay so let's list them so the following functions are all functions with the period at least 2 pi will be its period so sine x sine 2x sine 3x and uh, so on and so forth and uh, cosine x cosine 2x and cosine 3x and if you want um, trig functions for um, any period let's say the period I want is 2 times capital L and then you can rescale these functions and you will have these sine pi x over L sine 2 pi x over L and sine 3 pi x over L meaning you can put a, a whole number here and the same for cosine pi x over L cosine 2 pi x over L and cosine 3 pi x over L so on and so forth and finally um, the constant function f equals 1 is periodic with any period because it repeats itself all the time it's just constant 1 okay so combining with this constant function 1 and collecting all the sine functions and cosine functions for with period 2L so we have sine m pi x over L where this m is just constant number 1 2 3 4 and the same for cosine m pi x L with m um, a natural number so this is a set with uh, infinitely many functions and we call this the trig set Okay, and uh, all these functions here are periodic with period 2L. Okay, so let's plot some um, 
sine functions. So we see that um, the first graph is just the function sine x. Its period is 2 pi. Um, this is sine x. Okay, so from 0 to 2 pi, it repeats itself. And uh, it goes up and it goes down. And it has a positive half from 0 to pi and the negative half from pi to 2 pi. And the part that's positive and the part that's negative, and they are the same. It's just flipped image of each other. Okay. And then um, if you look at um, sine 2x, it's more or less the same shape as the sine x, but it's squeezed. So from 0 to 2 pi, the function actually repeats itself twice. That's where you get number 2 here. Okay. And also, um, if you look at the positive part, then you have two portions positive and two portions negative, and the positive and negative parts are the same. Okay, and so finally, um, this will be sine 3x, and it just repeats itself three times once, twice, three times over a period of 2 pi. So, 2 pi is period for all these three functions, but they, they're periodic and then they have many other periods as well. Okay, so before we even introduce Fourier series, we need to introduce a concept um, called in the product. And we have heard about this in connection with the vectors and there is connection here, similar concept. Okay, so now we are talking about two functions. We call it ux and vx, and we define an inner product. And this is our notation. We put it in a bracket, u, comma, v in a bracket. If we write this, that means the following. This is the definition. That is, we integrate from a to b the product of these two functions, dx. Okay, so this is a definition. And uh, in our case, in the study of Fourier series, here we will choose a and b to be special values. So we're considering functions of period 2L. Therefore, we choose an interval around the origin symmetrically. So a will be negative L, b will be L, and we will be integrating the function from negative L to L. That will be the period of the product u times v. Okay, so with this um, definition comes the next definition, that is the orthogonality of functions with respect to this inner product. So once we have the inner product, and then we can define the two functions u and v, uh, we call them to be orthogonal with each other if their inner product equals zero. So recall a similar definition in vectors. If you have two vectors, their inner product is zero, then you know they are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other in 2D. Okay, so here comes the big claim. We claim that the trig set, which we just defined with sine and cosine and constant one, the set is mutually orthogonal. What does that mean? Well, that means if you pick up any two distinct functions in the set, they are orthogonal to each other. Okay, any two distinct functions. Okay, so let's list all the possibilities. So we see that one is the function. Okay, we can combine one with any of the sine functions. Then this inner product shall be zero. That's what we are claiming. Okay for all m, m equal 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And similarly, the function 1 and all the cosine functions here are also orthogonal, so the inner product is 0 for all m. And the next one we'll be looking at all the sine functions, sine function with the m here and sine function with the n here, and I want them to be distinct. So this inner product will be 0 if m does not equal to n. And a similar thing for the cosine functions. If you have two cosine functions with different um, constants m and n here, then and the inner product is 0. 
And finally, we have um, all the sine function and the cosine function. And uh, this product in the product is zero. And because sine and cosine functions are not the same function from the set, therefore this holds for all n and m, including the case when m equals n. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can prove this claim. Well, um, one can just prove it by direct integration, going through all the cases. So we'll cover a couple of them. For example, um, consider the first one, the function 1 and the function sine, m pi x. Okay, what is the inner product? Well, it's just the integral from negative L to L of sine times 1, which is the sine function. And we see that that is 0. Why is it 0? Well, because um, we know that the, the sine function, how does the sine function look like? We can let's try negative L and L. Sine function is uh, um, periodic, right? And uh, it's a it's an odd function, so um, if m equals 1, it's a function like this, right? If m equals 2, it um, goes um, up and down. But so, which means the integral part from 0 to L will cancel the part from negative L to 0 because they're just, it's an odd function, and therefore it's 0. Or you can also argue that here you are integrating from negative L to L, which is a whole period of uh, a multiple period of this sine function. And you know, integrating over any period, the positive part cancels the negative part, and it becomes zero. Okay, now let's look at the next case, that is um, um, the sine function with another sine function. So consider the case m is different from m, and look at the inner product of these two. That is the integral of a sine function times a sine function, where m does not equal to m. So you can think this is sine of an angle A times sine of an angle B, and then you can use um, this formula that will um, um, change the product of two sine function into um, the summation of two sine or cosine function, depending on the case. So sine A times sine B will equal um, cosine um, A minus B minus cosine A plus B times half. So we got a half here, and we have a cosine of uh, M minus M pi X and minus cosine M plus M pi X. Okay, so we see that when m does not equal to n, so the difference here is at least 1 or higher, then this integral from negative L to L integrates over multiple periods of the cosine function, so it will give us 0. And the same thing happens here. This will be a number um, bigger than or equal to 1, or bigger than 1, then um, you will also integrate over multiple periods of that cosine function, and then it gives you zero, okay? And then the end is zero. So um, here we see the importance of um, saying m is different from n. If m equals n, what happens? Well, this term will integrate still to be zero, but here we'll have zero right, and minus n. If they're same, we have cosine 0, and cosine 0 is 1, and you will be integrating 1 from negative L to L, which will give us 2L, and divided by 2, which will give us capital L, so it's not 0. Therefore, this is important, okay? Therefore, a sine function is not orthogonal to itself. It's orthogonal to another sine function. Okay, and uh, all the other um, identities that we claimed, um, they can all be proven in a similar way. And I'll leave that for you to practice and we skip the details. Okay, so let's end with uh, some useful identities, which is something we will encounter often. That is, um, 
the inner product of the sine function with itself equals L, and the inner product of cosine with itself equals L for any number m, and m equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, so we kind of uh, proved it on the previous um, slide, at least for the sign. Let's just summarize it. So the inner product of that will be the integral of sine square of this angle. And another possibility will be to use the um, double angle formula. And this gives us half of 1 minus cosine of twice of that angle. And then we see that the integral of this is 0 because we integrate over whole periods of that. And then we'll be integrating only um, 1, which gives us 2L. Cancel by the half, this is L. And uh, the identity for this cosine equals L can be computed in a totally similar way. However, here I would like to introduce a shortcut to compute. Um, we can compute these two together by making the observation. So observing that um, this is an integral of sine square and this is the integral of cosine square and we are integrating over whole periods, multiple of them. And then we see that if you square them, then the negative part all flip up to be a positive part. Okay, And then we know this integral of the sine and the cosine, they must equal to each other. And then we can use the trig identity, that is sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, and we have the following. So this one plus that one would equal to integrating from negative L to L of, this will be the sine square, this give us cosine square. And then the trig identity says you're integrating just constant 1, and you will get 2 times L. Okay, And then since this quantity equals that quantity, and they add up to 2L, then each of them must equal to L, which gives us the same answer. Okay, so that's all for this video, and uh, it's an introduction and some background knowledge that we would need for the next one, where we will enter into Fourier series. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.